whether good or evil. Everything will be laid bare. This is fear of God, is to preach his, the second coming of Jesus, what Jesus said. See, in 2 Peter 2, we see the fear of God warned. He says, just as there were false prophets among you, so there shall be false teachers who privily, meaning they come sneakily in, bringing in destructive heresies, even tonight, destructive doctrines, destructive teachings, like don't fear God. Or destructive teachings that you just keep on sinning. Destructive teachings. And it says that the, the way that the way of truth will be spoken evil of because of these false teachers. Second Peter 2. It says many will follow their pernicious ways. You got to believe on Jesus. You know what Jesus said? Whoever is ashamed of him and his words, he will be ashamed of. In this adulterous generation, you wicked people hate Jesus. That's why you shake your head. You guys put Jesus on the cross with your, with your shaking head. Jesus died for you that you could have new life. Jesus said that there is a heaven and a hell. Jesus said he hell was created for the devil and his angels in Matthew 25. But many are following. See, most people hate Jesus. They have a form of godliness, but they don't have the Jesus of the Bible. They, they hate the street preaching. This, this, this message got Jesus crucified. This message got 11 of the apostles crucified. Praise the living God that we believe. We believe. Praise the living God. See, 2 Peter 2, you love your false teachers. You love your false teachers that come in privily, bringing in destructive heresies and doctrines. And many follow their pernicious ways. It says that the way of truth is evil spoken of because of these false teachers. You see Hillsong, Ravi Zacharias. We see so much adultery in the church. We see so much false prophesying in the last days. We just see wickedness in the churches. We see fraud in the churches. And that's the way of Balaam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of fraud in church. Second Peter 2. Catholic Church is, is, is the harlot of Revelation. Don't pray to Mary. That's a dead prayer. You know what the Bible says? You know what the Bible says? Let them talk. Let them talk. Listen to me one second. Yeah. We don't pray to Mary. We pray that Mary prays for us. That's that's a wicked prayer, my friend. No, it isn't. Jesus. She, we're not praying to Mary. We're praying that Mary intervenes for us. Can you show me that in the Bible? It is all throughout. No, it's nowhere. It is. Everywhere. Jesus is the high priest in Hebrews. He is, he is the intercessor, not Mary. And, and your Catholic religion says, pray for us, Mary, us sinners. You pray know what the Bible us. says? You pray know what? But, us. but us sinners? Are you a sinner? Yes, I am. Why? You're supposed to be a we saint of God. No, 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 no. Then We're I born again. We're born again. You know what it says? God does not hear the prayers of sinners. You know what it says? First Peter four. First Peter four. First Peter four says, "He who has suffered in the you're deceived. You're false. You're false. Your pope is false. That's all. Your pedophile priests are false." The Pope is trying to join the one world religion. No, you're supposed to be a saint of God, a holy brethren, a divine partaker. You're supposed to be street preaching, but you're preaching to pray to Mary. That's falsehood. Thanks for showing how false it is. See, the Bible says God does not hear the prayers of sinners. The Bible says whoever keeps on sinning knows not God. First Peter three. Shall we go on and sin? You have anything, friend? Shall we go on and sin that grace may abound? Yep. Romans six. If you want to talk, I'll talk to you, friend. You got to be born again in the spirit of God. You got to be a new creation in Christ. See, the new creation in Christ is no longer sinning every day. My wife just said Hebrews chapter 10 says, if we go on sinning willfully after we have the knowledge of truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment. You hear the word fearful expectation of judgment under the old law with Moses, men were killed on two or three witnesses. How much sore the punishment if we trodden under the foot, the son of God and insult the spirit of grace. Read your Bible, you Catholic harlots. You must be born again. Come out from among them. The Bible says all you Protestants join in the Catholic religion. That's why I let that man speak because he's speaking not according to scripture. He's speaking error and the world heareth him. But but we who are of God speak the words of God and those who are of God heareth us. The Bible says, man, you guys need to get the spirit of God in you. You don't have the spirit of God. You have the spirit of this world. Ephesians chapter two says we were once 
alienated from the commonwealth of God. We were once all dead in our trespasses and sins. We were dead in it until Christ made us alive. See, you got to be a new creation in Christ. No longer under the prince, the power of the air, the ruler of the sons of disobedience. So you people saying that we're all sinners, you're still a, under the sway of the devil. That's what it's saying. First John chapter two says you've overcome the wicked one. First John chapter two says the problem is you love the world and the things of the world. Love not the world or the things of the world. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life is not of the father, it is of the world and it is fading away in the lust thereof. But he who does the will of God endureth forever. First John chapter three says whoever committeth sin uh, uh, is, is, is not of God. First John chapter three says, little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteous is righteous even as he is righteous. He who practices sin is of the devil. And by this, the children of God and the children of the devil are made manifest. We've been telling you that the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Your own words are going to condemn you. That's why we're here to tell you, you must repent. You must come out of your falsehood. First John chapter three tells you whoever practices sin is of the devil. It's right there. First John chapter three says whoever abideth in Christ sinneth not. It's right there. The Bible says God does not hear the prayers of sinners, but him who does the will of the father, him he hears. First Peter chapter four says as Christ suffered for us in the flesh, so we must arm our minds. He who is suffering the flesh has ceased from sins that we no longer go on as we used to in the lust of the flesh as we used to. Your banquetings, your revelries, your orgies, your, your idolatries, your big parties, your, all of these things. It says you no longer do it. It says you no longer. But you're trying to say we still do it. See, the Catholic Church is a big harlot. It's warned about in the end of the Bible. It says, come out from among them. Be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing. See, if you're born again in the Spirit of God, you'll read that Bible. And when they're preaching the very opposite of it, you cannot partake. You cannot partake in the house of God, in the house of devils. You just can't do it. And that's why we're out here being a fool for Christ, that you might hear the word of the Lord, that you might be convicted in your inner man, that you might read that Bible for yourself and say, it's written, it's just like he said in 1 John 3, whoever committeth sin is of the devil. And Christ came to defeat the works of the devil. That's what it says. Romans chapter 6 says, Shall we go on in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How could we who have died to sin live any longer therein? Don't you know who, whoever you submit yourselves to, that is who you're a slave of. So you guys saying you sin every day? You're submitting to it. You're saying you can't overcome. Praise God. The Bible says we can overcome. How do we overcome? First John chapter 5 says by our faith. See, your faith isn't in God. Your faith is in man. That's why Jesus said, these people draweth near unto me and they, and they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Teaching the doctrines and precepts of man. The Catholic church is a doctrine and precept of men. If you're born again, you wouldn't stay in it. If you're born again, you'd be out in these street corners compelling people to hear the word of the Lord. That what Jesus said is if you're not doing the will of the Father and you're just saying, oh, I'm Catholic and I go to church, you're going to hear, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You know what Jesus said in Matthew 13 about the judgments? At the end of the age, the Son of Man is going to send out his, his angels. Matthew 13, 41 through 43. At the end of the age, the Son of Man is going to send forth his angels to reap. Where are they going to reap? Out of his kingdom, all who offend and practice iniquity. And then it says that they're going to be cast away where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. But the righteous will shine forth like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Read the Bible for yourself. Put this word in your heart. You know what he said in Psalm 119? I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. See, the problem is you're not putting the word of God in your heart. The problem is you're putting man's doctrines in your heart and then you're proclaiming them forth as if they're the word of God. And I'm here to warn you. I'm here to warn you. Second Peter 2 says, if God spared not the angels that sin, praise God. If God spared not the angels that sin, but cast them into, into punishment held in chains, reserved unto that day of judgment. And God saved Noah, a preacher of righteousness, when he flooded the ungodly world and only eight were saved. Does that sound like we should not fear God? That shows you that God is angry. You know what it says? God is angry with the wicked every day. And God hates all workers of iniquity. And you're going to say that God is like unto you? You're going to say that this Catholic church is telling us to pray to Mary uh, or to have Mary pray for us? My friends, if you are praying to God Almighty yourself, you are not born again. 
you're praying to Mary or you're praying to saints. That is wickedness. The Bible says that's necromancy, praying to the dead. The Bible calls that an abomination in Deuteronomy 18. But you don't read your Bible. That's why we're in front of the Catholic churches. That's why we're in front of Rick Warren's church. That's why we're in front of Calvary Church for preaching against the word of God. That's why, that you might hear and be saved. You know what it says in 1 Timothy chapter 4? That the Holy Spirit expressly states that some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, having their conscience seared as with a hot iron, speaking lies and hypocrisy. See, it's hypocrisy to say that you can't stop sinning because Jesus said, go sin and no more. So somebody's a liar. It's either you or Jesus, and it's not Jesus. Jesus gave us power to overcome by following him. Jesus said, love not this world, neither the things that are of the world. That's the problem. People love the world. They love their sin. They love their idolatry. They, they, they love the praise of men. They, they, you know what Jesus said? Blessed are ye when you are persecuted and reviled for my name's sake. For so they persecuted the prophets who came before you. Great is your reward in heaven. See, you're supposed to be persecuted for preaching the narrow path. See, the, the, everything will manifest. Second Peter 2 says that God spared not the ancient world, but saved Noah, preacher of righteousness. Only eight were saved. And God judged Sodom and Gomorrah to make it an example to those who would live ungodly after. But he saved righteous Lot, who was vexed with their filthy communication and deeds. And God knows how to save those who are his. And it says in 2 Timothy, let everyone who nameth the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Does that sound like sinning every day? No. Depart from iniquity. Fear God and keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. See, the Bible goes on to say in 2 Timothy chapter 3 that perilous times will come. And this is a, a doctrine of reprobation. You will know them by their fruits. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. So 2 Timothy chapter 3 is showing you a, a, a doctrine of reprobation. He says perilous times will come. Men will be lovers of self. They will be proud, boasters, arrogant, despisers of those who are good. Truth breakers, disobedient to parents, unholy, profane. And it goes on to say that they have a form of godliness, but deny the power therein. From such turn away, praise God. And then he goes on to say at the end of 1 Timothy chapter 4, where we see the departing of the faith, deceiving spirits, doctrines of devils, having your conscience seared, speaking lies and hypocrisy. After that, what does it say? It says you hold the sound doctrine. By doing this, you will save yourself and those who hear you. That's what the word of God says. Are you saving yourself initially? No, you're holding to sound doctrine. So that means you're justified through the blood of Jesus, not of your works, lest any man should boast. We can't earn our way unto the cross of salvation. We have to be born again of the spirit of God. Now, after that, you have to be sanctified by the word of God. Jesus said in John 17, Father, sanctify them in thy truth. Thy word is truth. Every word of God is, is tr tried in the fire seven times, the Bible said. The word of God never returneth void. The word of God is Jesus Christ coming back to judge in Revelation. So we see that we have to hold to this word. And we're supposed to reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly furnished for every good work of righteousness. And it says that at latter, at, at 2 Timothy chapter 4, but men, there'll come a time when men will not endure sound doctrine, but they will heap up for themselves teachers who will preach to their itching ears, turning away, turning to their own lust, their own lust. They want their sin and they turn away from the truth. They turn away from the truth. Okay? That's what the Bible says. Are you reading it? Are you obeying it? Praise God. See, Jesus is coming back to judge. He's coming back to judge. Second Thessalonians chapter 1. Jesus Christ is coming back to judge. Fear God. Here's what it says in Second Thessalonians 1. Through the manifold tribulations and persecutions that ye endure, it counts you worthy of the kingdom of God. It's the manifest token. It's the proof of God that you're found worthy of the kingdom of God in which ye suffer. And that those who are persecuting you, Jesus Christ is coming back in flaming fire with the holy angels to judge those who know not God, nor obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they will be thrown into everlasting destruction. That's what it says. Fear God. Read that Bible. Who It said that those who do not obey. You know what 1 Peter chapter 4 says? Again, about that Catholic wicked doctrine and those other people who have adopted it, that we're all sinners. No, the Bible calls born again saints of God, divine partakers, holy brethren. 
a city on a hill. We are, we are to be separate from the world. We are to preach, repent, or perish. Born again of the Spirit of God, or the Spirit of God beareth not witness in you, and you're an enemy of the cross of Christ. We are to rebuke false teachers that are preaching against the Scriptures, and I'll get to that. And in 1 Peter chapter 4, it says, The house of God is judged first. That's what it says. And if scarcely a believer be saved, where will the ungodly and sinner appear who obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ? See that obedience? Where's the ungodly and sinner going to appear? You, you, praying to Mary is a dead prayer. Wake up. Wake up. And all you other people in the Protestant churches and the Baptist churches saying that we all sin every day and we can't stop sinning. You're preaching against Jesus who said, go sin no more. You're preaching against Peter who said, those who suffer in the flesh have ceased from sin. First Peter 4. You're actually saying that First John chapter 3 isn't true. That says whoever practices sin is of the devil. You're just missing. You're, you're, you're missing. You're missing the word of God in your heart. You haven't put it in your heart. You don't hunger and thirst for righteousness. Read that word of God. Here's how Jesus judges the churches in Revelation chapter 2. This is fearful. There's only a remnant. In Ephesus, he says, I know your works. See, Jesus has eyes of fire, hair white as wool, feet as burnt as bronze, the voice of many waters, double-edged sword in his mouth, the word of God. John is the only apostle left alive. All the other have been martyred for this word. And, and John was thrown into a vat of oil to be killed by Nero, and he wouldn't die because Jesus had this last book of Revelation for him that he already prophesied after he resurrected. Hear the word of the Lord. And John, underneath this glory of the risen Jesus, falls down as if dead. Does that sound like we shouldn't fear God? This resurrection, God is not like unto us. He is spirit, and Jesus is the visible image. And the resurrected Jesus, Paul, John fell down as if dead. And Jesus touches him and he says, fear not, behold, I was dead, but I'm alive forevermore. I have the keys of death and hell. Write down the things that you see, the things that are, and the things that shall be. Blessed are those who hear and read the prophecy of this book and those who keep it. You get blessed. You want to be blessed? Read, the, read Revelation. You want to get blessed? Do, do the will of God. Yeah, that's, that's the joy of the Lord. You'll have joy, unspeakable joy. You'll know the truth. And you'll compel people. And you'll see it really is a narrow path. It's, it's a bloody gospel. And Jesus, resurrected like this, looks at the church of Ephesus. And he says, I know your works, that you've labored. You can't bear those who are evil. You've tried those who claim to be apostles and proved them to be liars. There's one spot in the Bible that says we're supposed to prove those who claim Christ and preach differently. We're supposed to find them liars and prove it by the word of God. That's what a disciple does. That's what a disciple does. Are you doing that? Are you reading the word of God? Are you going down that narrow path? And Jesus says to this group of people who are doing those kind of works, um, but this I have against you, that you forgot your first love. Repent and, and remember the first works, or else I will move thy candlestick. And he, Jesus says, but this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Are you guys preaching the right Jesus? Jesus hates the deeds of the Nicolaitans. Jesus doesn't wants the false apostles proven to be liars in the very first church he judges in, in Ephesus, Revelation chapter 2. The next church Jesus judges is Smyrna. And, this, and he says, you think you're poor, but no, thou art rich. Hold fast. Let no one take your crown. The devil will cast some of you into prison ten days. Be faithful unto the death. To him who overcomes, you will not taste the second death in the second church. What do we see? The true church being persecuted. That's what we see. But what else do we see? Jesus said that there are Jews that say they're Jews, but are the synagogue of Satan. You see that? Inside the church, a true remnant and falsehood. It's right there if you read your Bible. It's right there in the word of God. It's a spiritual war. It's a spiritual war. Are you following the Jesus of the Bible? Are you a new creation in Christ? Are you still just talking uh, men's doctrines that we can pray to Mary and sin every day and that we're all sinners? The man wouldn't hear. His ears are stopped up. Gave you the scriptures. Go see for it yourself. That's what the Bible says. Should we speak against it? Nope. Jesus says he comes and fights with the sword in his mouth in the next, in the next, cha in the next Revelation chapter 2, Pergamos. What does he say? He says, I know your works, even where the seed of Satan is. And he says, the way of Balaam. See, I didn't finish 2 Peter 2. I, they, they got all uh, appalled that I said, yeah, it's in the church. It certainly is in the church. The way of Balaam is mentioned three times. In 2 Peter 2, it says that the false teachers come in and make merchandise out of you. Using feigned words, feigning righteousness. 
and it says they promise you liberty, but they themselves are slaves of corruption. With their eyes, they can't cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls. Jesus died for you. Do you hate him? No, he died for you. Loud in my okay, Jesus said, whoever's ashamed of him and his words, he will be ashamed of. Wow. Read the Bible. The Bible says to lift up your voice like a trumpet, declare sin. Get born again in the spirit of God. Don't hate the word of God. BLM comes and they get on their microphones. The concerts blast music here. Is that okay with you? You're a friend of the world. The Bible says if you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. That's what the Bible says, James. So you see the way of Balaam mentioned in 2 Peter 2. After you see the list of these false teachers. After you see the list of, of things that make you uh, reprobate in 2 uh, Timothy 3 and Romans 1. You see this list? Well, it says the deeds are made manifest. You're supposed to see these things. You're supposed to understand these things. It says in 2 Peter 2 that they forsook the right way. And they went the way of Balaam, the man of the prophet. You read Numbers, you read your Bible, and you understand that Balaam spoke for God. So he spoke for God, but then he got uh, double-minded over filthy lucre and greed, it says in Jude. What happened? The Moabite king offered him fame and fortune. See, that's what happens. People become mega church pastors. They get $10 million. They start joining the Pope for the photo shoots. If you are born again, you can see this. You understand it. And we're out here preaching that you might hear it that are in these churches, that you might understand it. God showed me what the way of Balaam is during the 2020 and during when I saw all these false prophets joining with Bethel and I saw all these false Trump prophets and all these seducing spirits and they have no understanding of the second coming and judgment. They're not preaching that, but they call themselves apostles and prophets. They know not, they know not uh, judgment. The evil man know not judgment. They don't understand these simple things that you should understand if you're mature. The way of Balaam is starting off the right way and being given over to fame and fortune. Joining the Pope, getting on TV becomes the way that they make their ministry known straight up. Straight up. And I've talked to these pastors saying, come out with Bible signs. And they say, that's not the love of Jesus. Pastors say that. They don't want to go out in front of abortion clinics. They say it's not the love of Jesus. I said, really, the Bible is not the love of Jesus. You're deceived and you're deceiving others. You're keeping people under you. And they're joining the harlot church. They're joining falsehood. And they can't even see it. But you, may, maybe you have ears to hear. So the way of Balaam is the warning. And it says, you who have escaped the corruption of the world in 2 Peter 2. Do you see that? You've escaped the corruption of the world. And then it says, you must escape them who are in error, the false teachers. 2 Peter 2, hear the word of the Lord. And if you escape them, you're going to come out from among them. And you're going you're to run with real people that are following Jesus by the word of God. You're going to seek for that. Because one of the uh, proofs that you're of God is you love the true brethren. You love those who are fully committed to the Lord. You know what the Bible says? It says that God's eyes roam to and fro the whole earth, looking for hearts that are fully committed to him, that he may strengthen them. Is your heart fully committed to God, or is it divided among this world? See, then it says in 2 Peter 2, it says, If after having known the way of righteousness, see, after having known it, that you become entangled in the world and overcome. If you become entangled in the world and overcome, it'd be better for you not to know the way of righteousness than ever have, have after having known to, like the true commandment says, go back to, a, the dog goes back to his vomit, or a pig wallowing in the mud. Praise God. So Revelation goes on to judge the churches. We see a true church and a false church all the way through it. Revelation chapter 2, at the end of the... A fourth church, we see Thyatira. And we see that their works and their last are better than the first, but we see a false prophet, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, who leads kids into sexual sin and food sacrifice to idols. Jesus says, I gave her space to repent. She repented not of her fornication. And all those who do not have this doctrine that knows the depths of Satan as they say, speak, see, there's a doctrine that speaks for Satan. We see false doctrine. All right there. If you fear God, you will, you will come away from false doctrine. You will have eyes to see what this says. Jesus says, whoever has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. As many as have that wicked doctrine, Jesus says he will cast their children into a sickbed and kill the children. So that all the churches will know that he searches the thoughts and hearts. Hear the word of the Lord. Jesus is showing you that you're supposed to see it. 
You're supposed to understand it. Planned Parenthood has put women on a sick bed and slaughtered babies and cut them in pieces and the church stays in the building. And as many as have not this doctrine, I'll put no other burden on you. Hold fast until I return to him who overcomes. I will grant it rule over the nations as I overcame and broke everything to shivers. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches. The last church, I'm just, the last chapter of the church judgment is Revelation 3. And he says this church thinks they're alive, but they're dead. Only a few walking in white. Strengthen the things that remain. I have not found your works perfect before my God, says the Lord Jesus Christ. He's saying the church thought they were alive, but they were mostly dead. Hear the word of the Lord. Remember what's been handed down to you, Jesus says. Only a few were counted worthy in this church that thought they were alive. They weren't walking in white. Their garments are defiled. Jesus says to him who overcomes, I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will speak to the Father about him. Revelation chapter 3, the lukewarm church. I'm skipping Philadelphia for time. And he says... I wish you were hot or cold, but because thou art lukewarm, I will spew thee out of my mouth. This church says, no, we're rich. We have need of nothing and plenty of goods. But Jesus says, no, you're not. You're poor, blind, naked, wretched, and miserable. Jesus says, I counsel you to buy from Jesus gold tried in the fire, that you may be clothed in white, that the shame of your nakedness be not exposed, that you may have eyes out to see. Behold, I chasten those I love. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. I stand at the door and knock. If anybody will open, I will come in and sup with him, and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit on my throne, even as, my fa- even as I overcame and sat on my father's throne. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Revelation 14 says that you're blessed are those who die from henceforth, for your works do follow you. Revelation 12, 11 says that we overcome by the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb, and we love not our own lives unto the death. Hear the word of the Lord. It's getting late. The season is late. And Jesus is coming back to judge.